What's up everybody, Chris from Full Steam Designs. Today I'm gonna to show you how I made a new wasteboard for my CNC that features T-Tracks. I'm gonna show you how I set everything up, we're gonna surface it, then I'm gonna show you how I made these fences, and we'll talk a little bit about clamps and dust collection. So stick around. I'm starting this out by attaching a sheet of MDF to my machine. If you watched my video on the Frank and Poco build, you probably saw that all I have is a T-slot frame. Unfortunately, I didn't have the right piece for my dust collection here, so it was a little messy. We'll talk about this a little more towards the end of the video. To hold this in place while cutting, I used some angle brackets and screws from the bottom. I cut round countersunk holes with a slot going all the way through them to accept these T-slot nuts and bolts. They rotate 90 degrees and lock into the frame. Then you just tighten them like a normal nut and bolt. Next I cut up some strips of MDF. I found that if I used 4 inch wide strips, I could fit 7 of them between 8 3 quarter inch wide pieces of T-Track. This would allow me to have the maximum area that my surfacing bit could reach. I'll explain what I mean here after we get everything installed. I used a V-bit and manually jogged the spindle to make a line to square my first piece of T-slot against. I used a drill bit designed for hinges to help center my pilot hole and installed the screws. Next I used a strip of MDF to lay out my next piece of T-slot. I just continued this until they were all installed. Not only does this look really nice, but it allows you to replace single strips of MDF instead of the entire wasteboard. It also offers a ton of area for clamps. To secure the strips of MDF, I started by using double-sided carpet tape to hold them in place. I used three small strips on each piece. I used a half-inch V-bit to make a series of countersunk holes. I used the same hinge drill bit to drill the rest of the way through the strips and then ran my screws in. It's important that the heads of these screws are well below the surface. Now we can go ahead and surface our wasteboard. This is a very important step and crucial to getting quality cuts, especially when it comes to V-carves and through cuts. I simply draw a rectangle a little larger than the area that I need to cut. I used a one and a quarter inch bit and make very fast shallow passes. I'm only removing 0.02 inches for my first pass, and a lot of it isn't even cutting. I'm doing this to ensure that the surface of my wasteboard is parallel to my X and Y axis. Since some areas didn't get cut, I drop it down another 0.02 inch and run it again. You might have also noticed that my X and Y zero were slightly off on the first pass, leaving a ridge. I made sure to adjust this before making another pass. It's important to surface the entire wasteboard. You don't want to cut yourself a pocket, because then you can never work on anything larger than the pocket.
Next, I want to install a couple fences. These will ensure that my workpiece is square to the X and Y axis. It will also give me a repeatable zero point, so multiple jobs can be run without having to reset your zero. The only thing that would ever need to be re-zeroed would be your Z axis, if you either change a bit or your material thickness. Just make sure all of your drawings have the zero set to the lower left hand corner. This front fence is designed to be removable in case I ever need to tile a design or work on anything larger than my wasteboard. I should be able to remove this piece and reinstall it in the exact same location. This next step is critical. Now that we have the fences installed, we need to square them to our machine. I start by doing this along the Y axis. I lowered the bit until it was just above the T-track. This will ensure there isn't a lip left above the surface of the wasteboard that doesn't get removed and causes your material not to be square. I manually jogged the machine with the router running to do this, moving over an additional one millimeter for the second pass. I repeat the same process on the front, but only lower the bit until it was just above the wasteboard. I had cut a chamfer on this bottom corner to make sure it didn't have any material left here. You could also cut into your wasteboard here if you needed to, but I think it just looks more professional to do it this way. It's all user preference. You can see that each fence is not only square to one another, but they're both square to the motion of travel of the X and Y axis. When it comes to clamps, I'm a huge fan of these toe clamps from Pwn CNC. They just sent me some of these metal T-slot nuts that allow you to use a regular quarter 20 bolt and make for a super secure low profile clamp. There's a lot of other style clamps you can use. This style PowerTech and Incra hold down are popular, but it's important to remember they require a lot of clearance so you don't crash your bit or dust boot into them. I get a lot of questions about dust collection, so let's go over my setup real quick. It starts with a Pwn CNC V2 dust boot. I use one of their 90 degree hose pieces to connect to a Bosch vacuum hose that I have hanging from above. I use a small wooden bracket to support the hose. Here you can see I also have a box fan that I can slide filters in front of to collect any dust in the air. Finally, we can trace the hose to my 14 gallon Bosch dust extractor. Here's an overview of everything. This does a great job of collecting larger chips and dust. No matter how great of a dust collection system you have, don't be like me and forget to turn it on or connect your hose. I made a bit of a mess earlier because of that. The next step is to tram your machine. I have a whole video on doing that as well as many more. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like and share this video. If you haven't already done so, I'd appreciate if you click that subscribe button. I have a ton of CNC and other woodworking and maker related videos to check out. I'll see everyone over on one of these other videos.